Hi guys, I'm doing my Easter revision plan video today. Excuse the wet hair, um, I haven't really got time to make this video, so it's being done quick fire. Um, do you like my light box? Martin hates it, which is why I deliberately have it out all the time just to annoy him and remind him the science with hazel is where it's at. Anyway, let's talk about your Easter revision plan. So this is your short term revision plan. Exams are getting closer, not so close that you need to panic because there's still so much time and if you use your time effectively, you'll still be able to do super well. So for those people who have been a bit disorganised, not done as much work as they wish they had over the course of the year, don't panic, you still have plenty of time, it's time to get organised however. So, for those really organised people that have made your revision notes, now is the time to be going over the revision notes. Don't start making new revision notes, that's a bit of a waste of time at this point because you need to be getting it into your brain fixed there rather than spending hours making notes. So start learning those notes, get your parents to help, hold um, study clubs with your friends, try and share the load. If you can teach each other the topics, that will really, really help you recall because you'll be listening to your friend tell you, which I'm assuming they'll do it in a more interesting way than your teacher did, and you'll also be teaching them, and teaching is the number one way of helping you recall stuff because it's the reason why I seem to know quite a lot is because I'm constantly teaching people the same material. So the thing about revision is you just want to be going over and over and over your notes whether it's your parents helping you, your friends helping, your brother, watching my videos, reading over your own notes, just keep going over and over them. Now for those people who haven't made revision notes, don't panic, just get Get clever, use your revision guide. You Can you pass me a revision guide? <laughs> you don't want to be using the textbook at this point because um, it's just too much information. It's too much detail, too stressful, too much filler, and it's not going to be concise enough. So you just need to be using your revision guides because these are nice and concise. They have lots of practice questions in them and they have been written with your exam board in mind. So for the people who seem to think the revision guides will only get you a C grade, that is wrong. They wouldn't make these revision guides unless you could obtain the highest grade possible. So whether that's a grade 9 or an A star, this is where it is at. There is enough content in here in order for you to score full marks if you're that way inclined. Now, I've talked about how you're actually going to use your notes, but really I can't tell you how important it is, I can't instill how important it is to use past papers. They are your best friend. And to be honest, you want to be spending about 50% of your revision time using past papers, printing them off or looking at them online, filling in your answers nice and concisely and then checking your answer against the mark scheme. It's so important that you do that and make sure you know that where these um, past papers are because some people don't seem to know how to find them. So you need to be very specific, you need to be googling your exact spec, so whether that's AQA or IGCSE at Excel or IGCSE CIE or OCR Gateway, OCR 21st Century, St Scottish hires, um, see I'm trying to name as many examples as I can think of off the top of my head. Make sure you're looking at the right questions because it's going to be a nightmare if you're answering papers that have a different style, different questions, it's from a different exam board, it's just going to make you freak out. So can't, can't tell you how important that is and I know it's a very obvious point. And to that end, I'm now actually going to switch and show you how to look and use those um, exam papers and those mark schemes appropriately. So I'll switch over there now. Okay, so I have a biology past paper question here, so as always make sure you read every single word. Please don't just skip over to where you think the question starts because too many people lose marks by not labelling diagrams or adding arrows for force diagrams and all that sort of thing, which is really annoying because they're easy marks to get and you're just kind of not getting them at all. Anyway, starch is digested in the small intestine. The small intestine con contains many structures that absorb glucose. The diagram shows one of these structures name this structure, so because it's got that very distinctive finger-like projection, I know it's the villi. And then it gets a bit more serious here because in part two we're being asked to explain how this structure is adapted to absorb glucose. And look, it's worth five marks. I need to be making five separate points or I need to be hitting five separate marking points. Um, so for people who only write like one line, you're obviously not going to be getting those five marks. You need to be careful and make sure you're providing enough points for the number of marks available. And let's look at the key words here. So the structure is important, how it's adapted, and we're looking at the absorption of glucose. So here are our key words that it's going to help direct our answer. So I'm going to start, I'm going to bullet point, and I'm going to say that first of all, the villi has microvilli. 
I remember those are even more projections on the edge of the villi which increase the surface area further. So because I'm just doing it at home for revision, I'm not going to write the most um, detailed answers ever, but I'm going to get the key points in. And look, I've written that because I think I'm writing revision, because I just said the word revision because I'm stupid. So you're going to write increase the surface area for absorption. So I've already made two separate points. Regardless of the fact that they're like linked, it's very scientific, the words I'm using, so do try and include as many scientific terms as possible. Next up, we've got this structure coming up here, um, and these are the capillaries, and you need to say lots of capillaries, or, and I like to constantly say what I mean, so I'm going to write in brackets, good blood supply. And that's key because that's where the glucose is going to be absorbed into, so you need to have plenty of blood that the glucose can actually move into. What else is key about this is you need thin walls. And why are thin walls important? Well, it's so that there's a short diffusion distance. And look, I've used the word diffusion here, so that's another key scientific word. Anyway, I'm going to stop there, and now I'm going to change pen, which I don't actually have another colour, so that's a bit awkward. But I'm going to look at the mark scheme. Actually, please can I have a pen? And let's just see which marks we've hit. And the good thing to do here is to underline the marks you've been awarded so you can try and remember them for next time. So, as I can see, I've got the microvilli marks, so I'm going to underline that one. I've got the large surface area because I've said increased surface area, which is basically the same. They've got a mark just for writing the word capillaries, so I can just underline that one. Um, I didn't mention the movement of blood, so I haven't got that one. However, I did say thin walls, so that's another mark. And then I said short diffusion distance. So I've got short distance there, but I've also got diffusion there, and that's it. I didn't mention active transport, and I didn't mention the movement of blood. However, let's just add it up. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've actually made six of the points, so I've definitely got my five marks. And because I've underlined it, I can see where the keywords are and what I need to learn next time. So I'm going to move on to a physics example now. And I'm going to lean on something because these Sharpies go through everything. And Martin will kill me if I ruin the table. Okay, so this is a horrible question I picked out to do with momentum. Question 7. Cars have a number of features that make them safe in a collision. Apart from seatbelts, name two safety features that reduce the risk of serious injury in a car crash. So it says apart from seatbelts, so don't go mentioning seatbelts. The obvious thing here for me is a crumple zone. And that's at the front of the car. And remember, that's what crumples up when the car hits something. And actually, that's a good thing, even though it looks barbaric when it happens. And there are airbags, which you bounce off. So, photograph A shows a person wearing a seatbelt. Using ideas of momentum and force, explain how a seatbelt reduces the risk of serious injury in a car crash. And that's worth four marks. So, we're using the ideas of momentum and force, and we're looking at how a seatbelt reduces the risk of serious injury. Now, in a question like this, this is really, really hard. So don't panic if you don't know the answer. You can have a stab at it, or equally you can approach it from the other point of view, which is to actually get the mark scheme out, and just have a good old read and see if you're actually happy with the science behind the answer. It doesn't matter if you don't know the answer yet. Just have a look. So we've got the same momentum change, see if you agree with that, but the time of impact increases. And yes, it will increase because that seat belt will stretch meaning that the time over which the momentum is changing has increased. And then if you remember this equation, which is force equals change in momentum over time, clearly if you increase the time, you're going to redu reduce the force that's been calculated, so therefore the force will decrease. The reason why the force decreasing is a good thing is obviously the person feels the force against their body, so you actually want to keep that number as low as possible. This is an easier mark to get, the fact that the seat bar stretches and again, easier is the fact that this increases the area over which the force acts, meaning that the pressure on the body is reduced. So, for me, I would identify the marks which I think I could quite easily get next time, which are those three, because it's more common sense, the seat belt stretching, increasing the area over which the force is felt. And then just try and have a look and be like, yeah, I think this makes sense, because 
you need to question spot. Effectively, these questions come up year in, year out, but they're just hidden slightly. So a different type of question might be explain how um, knee protectors protect a skateboarder when he falls off his skateboard. It's exactly the same answer. Or explain how an airbag works. Um, so do get used to question spotting, and the more you look at mark schemes, you'll see the more that the questions are all the same, even if they're worded differently, and in that way you can be really clever, because this question, I would expect for most of the population of students out there to only get one or two marks, but by being clever with your revision, you can easily score four marks. Right guys, I really hope you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and tell your friends about my channel, and to all those people who've already subbed, thank you so much, I really, really appreciate it. Bye! Thank you.